for the machine learning for the vehicular networks uh, for sixth generation that people have started looking at and they are looking at the candidates that what are the candidates uh, candidates and candidate algorithms uh, that can be applied or if there are any new algorithms have to be introduced what could be the possibility that that's what people are looking at right now so if you look at the machine learning for vehicular communication uh, the application what has to be taken care of when we design the machine learning algorithm is the intelligent multi radio access because there are too many vehicles running at higher mobility mobility and then we have to be very careful in assigning the resources the intelligent radio configuration is very important because uh, because to increase the spectrum efficiency and energy efficiency we cannot waste the spectrum and uh, it is continuously moving so adaptive beam tracking is very important why because the sixth generation yesterday we have seen the path losses are extremely high impact of absorption because of the atmospheric factors is extremely high building penetration losses for the internal mobile users was very very, very high so similarly uh, all those attenuations and uh, impacts will be very there and then because of that we want to have we wanted to have the pencil pencil beams which is which which is called highly directional beam to cover a particular mobile user or set of mobile users now when it is moving very quickly with the mobility so we are going to face a there's a trouble here because the the mobility is very high so we have to track the beam very quickly so if i look at the this figure if i look at this figure so if i uh, let's say my vehicles are moving very quickly and if i serving my pencil beam so this beam this they should be quickly adaptable or it should be quickly given to the another beam so that they can continuously see the seamless communication so fourth generation and fifth generation we are not facing that much of issue because But the path losses is not that much of a great issue right now. So you know, we can we can steer one particular beam for a longer distance, or you know, so far it is in the line uh, of my beam. I can cover up that particular vehicle. But then now the beams are very you know, pens, pencil oriented, very very tiny, very small beam width based beams are there because because of, to cover the higher losses of my sixth generation. so the adaptive beam steering is very important so people are working on this particular research problem a machine learning oriented adaptive beam steering for sixth generation communication networks or sixth generation wireless uh, communication so there are multiple open issues in that which covers the cognitive radio or cognitive radio has to be transferred in terms of intelligent radio uh if you look at the machine learning for uh, vehicular uh, other applications say is the resource allocation is very important and uh, what do i mean by the resource allocation that means uh, this vehicles are moving so if i look at my resource graph so the, these are the power domains and uh, this is the power domain and this is my frequency domain now these are my different vehicles vehicle 1 2 3 and 4 they are assigned to different sub carriers and they are continuously moving with time with the high speed so this resource allocation is very important so uh, using the machine learning this resource allocation should be very adequate to uh, predict the situation and continuously give them the best quality of experience and services so people are talking about a new term called qoes so which is quality of experience and services so this has to be very higher for sixth generation and role of machine learning is very important in maintaining that completely and uh, see seamless and making it most making it always always automatic uh, assignment intelligent network control traffic control is very important this is dealing the layer 2 requirements layer 2 that means uh, data link in data link layer there is a virtual layer called mac layer which is kind of giving the access is a fair access to a particular user to the channel so there are different set of algorithms which people are trying to invent here to control the medium access protocols so we can say like mac layer based medium access protocols uh, where the application of machine learning will be very important another problem is network function virtualization that is that is for the orchestration and network slicing so one particular physical network can be sliced into multiple smaller virtual networks and then it could be catered across multiple set of users so this is also a good application 
then the next set of uh, two three applications are the one is the intelligent vehicle misuse detection uh, this is for the network security part uh, network security that means at the higher level of our osi model where people are right now working on the uh, intruder predict predict uh, prediction and eavesdropper uh, you know, detection so that they can um, avoid the uh, misuse of uh, transmitted data uh, then uh, there are many other proactive and reactive uh, allocation based algorithm to overcome uh, all this uh, network security based issues so this is one another resource problem research problem so it need not to be that that you need to have to go through all of them so maybe two or three problems which you like uh, maybe we can start looking into that and we can start to explore some sort of work and try to publish the papers that is uh, that is the idea behind this particular summary uh, so machine learning based algorithm uh, in, the, in the radio access technology so we need uh, yesterday we were talking that we need a, a new radio access technology so yesterday what we have looked that you no know, people are trying to uh, look into the noma and ofdm based technology in, in in the fifth generation and fourth generation we have a lot of papers right and people have also tried to hybridize both of them noma and ofdm uh, but uh, in the initial time it may work, but I mean going forward we need something else for six generations. So and like this is an open research problem right now. Um, then the super massive MIMO would be the, would be the, the part along with the self-free communication. Uh, so this is going to be very important in raising the capacity in terms of terabits per second along with the higher frequencies. Definitely high frequencies is the is the key way to increase the capacity first. But beyond that, uh, supermassive MIMO will assist further to improve further. Uh, intelligent multiple accesses to the future sixth generation network. Uh, this is going to be dealing with the front pole part, uh, collecting the channel state information, and you uh, know, based on that, we have to see uh, and make the feedback for the environment, and then we have to assign the resources very carefully, uh, so that we do not lose uh, the signal to signal to noise and interference ratio and then we achieve higher quality of experience and services high mobility and uh, uh, no higher reliability these two are basic requirement of any radio access technology why because when we access it we have to maintain the fair access uh, for all the users so uh, the access technology is very important uh, otherwise uh, many users will be in a queue and then we are not utilizing our system properly and user will not be satisfied uh, with the performance also so radio access technology is very important uh, and machine learning will automate that and then give us a better way to assign the resources uh, the, the question is open question right now is how to how to uh, how intelligently to schedule the multi radio access for dynamic sixth generation uh, network so this, uh, this is kind of an open research problem and opportunity right now there are not many papers available for that. Very few selective papers are available based on the previous technology and hybridization, but nothing much new. So there is always a scope here if someone is dynamic and wants to explore this part of the things. Uh, apart from this, uh, the radio radio configuration is is going to be a challenge. So intelligently, the uh, allocated resources with low latency should be uh, the emerging topic. Of Low uh, latency is, is the emerging topic for future sixth generation vehicular network specifically because vehicles are moving with very speed in higher mobility and uh, the resource allocation with low latency is very important. Beam forming challenges, this is again a difficult challenge here because as I said, the pencil beams they are highly narrow and we have to keep steering it up. So we need a movement and a direction in our beam very quickly with the high velocity so that we do not lose the trace and we continuously serve the, serve the user which is running at a higher mobility for the vehicular communication. Uh, this I have already explained the resource allocation. Uh, this is a, a very good paper and mostly I have taken the IEEE papers so you will find the quality there. Uh, so I, I would suggest if you read the papers you read the IEEE papers so we have some authenticated data and some kind of a complex work so we get better level of thinking uh, in any in sort of research work. So uh, the resource allocation is, is a traditional and very well known problem. Correct. So what kind of resources we have to allocate the channels? We, if you are using NOMA based system, we have to allocate very good power levels. 
to the different users. So successive window friends cancellation will work very well. Computational capability, we have to look at the existing servers and we have to assign the resources and such so that uh, the resources are well assigned and it is within the limit of my computational capability. The time slot, class slots for each particular user uh, has to be assigned very well. And uh, apart from that, energy efficiency and spectrum efficiency, two of them are very important. Uh, now, what I've seen in a couple of papers, people are exploring uh, the, the game theory based or auction theory based approaches to predict the resource allocation in sixth generation or fifth generation. Uh, mainly I've seen for fifth generation because uh, right now the papers, uh, people are working on sixth generation. So maybe next one year we will see many similar approaches. Greedy algorithm is one of them. So we can also think of some of these kind of algorithms to apply and look at how the resource allocation is happening. Or you can you can hybridize any of them or you can you know, find out some you know it will changes in the existing algorithms and we can observe the performance through the study. Uh, radio resources in terms of power, spectrum, time domain, they have to be jointly considered to identify the best set of resource allocation. Now uh, one approach what I have seen is people are looking at uh, the blockchain based approach right now. So they are trying to look at the blockchain based resource allocation. Why we are looking at blockchain? Because it is highly distributed approach which reduces the computational complexity significantly. Point number one. Then the point number two is is highly secured. Uh, so the network security is very improved when we are looking at a blockchain approach. And when you try to hybridize machine learning, machine learning with blockchain, this is a, a, a decent research problem right now because um, this is going to be a very good hybridization of machine learning and blockchain together for a particular you know, resource allocation problem. So people are looking into that one also. Uh, uh, the accurate network, see rapid response is very important because the mobility is very important part there. So open algorithm should be responding very quickly. Whatever we design, self adaptivity is very important and accurate environment modeling is very important uh, to avoid the uh, unexpected uh, dip in the signal to noise ratio, signal to noise and interference ratio and achieve to achieve the higher higher performances. There are a couple of applications at the network layer also. Which is dealing in terms of network routing. Congestion and traffic offloading. So the application of machine learning people are trying to explore the traditional algorithms along with the combination of machine learning. For an example, OSPF is the standard traditional algorithm which is widely accepted in the industries. Uh, OSP, OS, o, OSPF stands for open shortest path first algorithm. So it looks for the shortest path first based on the cost factor and then identify the resources over the shortest path and assign them. Second uh, traditional algorithm was RIP, is uh, routing information pro protocol. These are the traditional algorithms. But along with the these algorithms, right, based on the weight factors, uh, which are which are based on our deep neural network. So the biases and weight factors would be analyzed by deep neural network, and then along with OSPF, the deep deep neural network or uh, reinforcement learning algorithms they are working excellent. And uh, this kind of research uh, opportunities also we can explore for sixth generation. The, the, apart from there are many other algorithms available. There are like this destination sequenced, sequenced distance vector based routing, stability based adaptive routing, uh, dynamic resource allocation, proactive resource routing, uh, and then the optimized link status, link state based routing protocol. This was covering the network layer. So, so far, uh, so far we have covered the physical layer uh, where what kind of integration could be there. Then we have looked at the data link layer where we are looking at the radio access technology. Uh, which is mainly a sub part which is called MAC layer uh, in the in the data layer. So which is dealing with the radio accesses of the multi multiple users. And then we looked at the network layer which is dealing with the routing flow and congestion control part. All these three will be integrated through the machine learning and then we can optimize the performance pattern. Any questions so far in this? Okay, if none then we move forward. 
So this is one of the approach. This is a very good paper and then they have a tutorial here over this particular. There is a long lecture here around 20 minutes lecture. So you can go through this particular tutorial video and then maybe you can give it to your student and then they can explore more on this and find out a solution. Uh, so that would be a learning exercise. So reinforcement learning based dynamic uh, channel assignments. So in this reinforcement learning based dynamic channel assignments, this is the Q learning based approach where they are dynamically uh, assign the radio resources to the uh, to the users and first uh, firstly what they are trying to do they are trying to you know monitor the states and then based on that they are trying to you know com compute so these are the states of the agents so agents they are learning continuously and then they are re reporting their states based on that states they are taking the actions so different actions are taken action number a and so forth and then there is a q value matrix so which will contain all the database which is collected uh, from the field and then based on this there is a Q learning law and here they write down the program so this is like a python library where they have defined their course uh, now there are existing courses also available if you want to learn and uh, think something new you need not to start from zero there are too many courses available i will share the resource so maybe you know one can learn from there and then according to your requirement or according to your algorithm which you have modified or developed you can change those codes and then you can deploy and then find out uh, what is the minimum operation and what is the best set of resource uh, given for this particular uh, allocation in that particular situation so it includes the channel interference monitoring monitoring uh, it, it looks at the uh, homogeneous and inhomogeneous traffic distributions also and continuously it will monitor the different changes in the traffic pattern with respect to time uh, and then so for an example peak hour traffic and week hour traffic peak hour that means business hours where the traffic is very high and then maybe in the nights we don't have that much of higher traffic before people are sleeping uh, in the evening we may have a bit higher traffic because everybody is doing the social chit chats so based on those times we can identify the traffic patterns and then we can assign the resources in such a way so that we minimize the failures and then we improve the performance so this is the you know, way what people are trying to look at this and then this 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 optimization is kind of a np hard sort of problem so uh, it's like a you know, we can we can think to find out the some some sort of closed form solutions and then you know, trying to identify the you know, performance in that way so the famous one is uh, is people are looking at is deep reinforcement learning based uh, Q Q learning based uh, resource allocation that is widely used right now by the people by different people. Now there are there are different kind of versions coming out of those concave based or convex based or hybrid hybrid version of concave and convex based uh, graph based resource allocation or they are looking at the sigmoid or ReLU kind of a estimation function when they are talking to define the 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 neural network and this kind of different versions are coming out uh, I, I will share the resource materials for this so they explain everything in very well uh, detailed uh, detailed one so before i go uh, before i go into this let me go to that particular resource of this one so in machine learning so for one and a half hour uh, you cannot cover everything but what i can do is i can give you the pointer this you can share with your students or maybe if you are interested you can go at your own so